Hello and welcome to Newsroom Series. I'm Alumbide Macaulay. Thank you for joining us. Coming up today. Minister of the Federal Capital Territory, Mr. Yesen Rike, holds Media Palais, speaks on several issues, including security in the federal capital. Kogi State Government inspects several road projects in Basa local government area. And Nasara and Benre State Government explores partnership in the area of security and agriculture. Thank you for joining us. As you may have gathered, our focus is the north central region of the country today. Minister of the FCT, Mr. Yesenrike, has been speaking on why he is yet to meet with a senator representing the FCT at the Senate, Senator Ireti Kingibe, over issues concerning the FCT. The minister speaking during a media chat today says the senator's claim of not being carried along is uncalled for and could be described as playing to the gallery. According to Mr. Wike, the senator, like other elected officials representing the FCT, should work closely with the ministry for the development of the FCT. He also believes politics has a role to play in the senator's actions. The problem is this. She ran an election against my friend, Philip Adudra. Right? And then she sees Philip Adudra everywhere with me. He said, I'm taking Philip everywhere, instead of she being the senator. How about? Would I abandon my friend because he failed the election? I mean, people are so petty. The eye of FCT, in terms of implement, implementing Mr. President's agenda, is me. Is me. Mr. Oh, President God. made promise to FCT. Mr. President told them, I have the new hope agenda today. The civil servants are happy. The hope has come back. I'm here to implement Mr. President's agenda. I'm not here to you supervise me. You didn't appoint me. What you can do is to do oversight function. When you come, if there are things you see, you think is wrong, it's within your powers to know what to do. You know, Speaking on security on the FCT, Mr. Yesunrike says some of the cases are deliberately blown out of proportion by persons with sinister motives. He says removing bottlenecks will go a long way to secure the FCT adequately. Last year, we are planning to build public procurement. Look, we want to have vehicles to launch by December and other communication gadgets. Allow us have emergency procurement. They refuse. I'm not saying that not doing that was what led to some of those kidnapping or what led to the kidnapping of the families and the rest. But if we had had this opportunity to launch the problem, not the public, that alone puts here before the, the, the criminal that look, these people are some are sort of a step. Yes. But it was when it happened in January I have to run to Mr. President, look, we can continue. As we said, the President gave us emergency procurement approval immediately that we must get this approval. And of course, we have done. The only snag we now have, again, I have said, in terms of security, we don't need to bring bureaucracy. We have now applied to the Office of National Security Advisor to allow us to have end user certificates of most of those uh, when I appeared before the Senate this day, a closed door session. And I briefed them. They were all happy with what we have done. Uh, we agreed that kidnappings take place. But the most kidnappings too are inside house kidnapping. You cannot run away from it. And two, you may not agree, but some people have this habit that look. Let's make it uncomfortable for the government. I can tell you that. Let's make it uncomfortable. Let the government have problems. Let us see that. Even when something happens, but not to the extent that it happened, 
their business is to blow it above what happened now. Administration of President Bola Tinubu heads to the one-year mark. Mr. Yesenwike says his ministry has a lot to show in terms of achievement in the FCT. Do we have a system yes. in place now yes. such that if you are no more the FCT minister, whoever comes in sees that template and jobs will go on without any hindrance? And I, you, you cannot. You see, leadership varies. After all, somebody was there. He didn't do it. They were still in TSA at the time? Yes. I came. I wrote to Mr. President. Look at the disadvantages. It should not help us to do anything. It is your ability to convince your boss and to see the advantage. And now he has seen it. And he said, go ahead. So, today, people say, I would have been told the construction site. How? It's because Mr. President had weighed it, has seen the advantages that were accrued to his government. He said, move on. Do you know nothing makes you happy when you see people are happy with what you are doing? I was in the Senate yesterday. I feel highly elated. Every speaker per speaker, every speaker per speaker, we commend you. Yeah. We have seen it. We are happy. Anywhere we go to, we are seeing so many things are happening. Yeah. And we're asking ourselves, how come this was not the case before? You have a new president who has given me the opportunity and who is giving me the support for me to actualize his agenda, particularly as it relates to FCT. For me, it's my greatest happiness that people see, people are commending. Elsewhere, this time to Benway State, where political and traditional leaders in Otoko District have cautioned the youth from the host community of the Federal University of Health Sciences to avoid acts capable of derailing the first medical specialized institution from delivering on its mandate. At a solidarity meeting with the vice chancellor and management of the institution, the former deputy governor, Mr. Benson Abonu, along with other stakeholders led by the Royal, His Royal Highness, John Aimoye, distanced themselves from the protests by some youth in the area. Political and traditional leaders from Otupo have distanced themselves from the reporters by youths in Benue South Senatorial District last week who alleged lack of employment for their people in Otada, the takeoff site of the specialized Federal University of Health Sciences, Otupo. In continuing with my discussion, I would like to, my stakeholders are here, my elders are here, some representatives of my youth are here, but I want us to be led from our side in discussion this afternoon by one of my sons, which is well known to you. Because if for nothing, the role he played for the actualization of the University Chief Hospital cannot be forgotten in Russia. The protest led by them, staged by them. We want to let you know that that protest has not in any way indicated that Otupo district is against your tenure in this university, which is not. Also at the meeting is the chairman of Otupo local government area and some of the protesters who call for peace. As a father, I know you must have put the issue of the protest behind you by now. It is not the popular view of the entire host community. Uh, I personally did my remarks on that and uh, I personally cautioned them. And as a father, I am here on behalf of everybody in the Tupulupa government to ask for forgiveness. 
because uh, a wrong approach was used for the genuine agitation. The Vice Chancellor cautioned the youth against the development of the area, which had no consultant prior to the establishment of the school, as a hint on efforts to move the institution to Akwetiakba. Our first Federal Character Commission report, you see that we have employed everybody from Bello. And I said, no, I even told them why this university started, people didn't, I was not sure whether it is going to hold, and then um, and the uh, security people don't want to come. This is the reason I was giving them. And therefore, the people from Benue were the one available and they were the one we, we took. So, the reason why I needed to say this is that we, do that we have whatever we do, we justify that. And if I tell you some of the employment we've done from the locals, you will be surprised. But why should I go out and be saying I've done this, I've done not? Because if I say that we've done this for the book, first of all, yes, the book is the host, the media host, but you know it's the temporary side. And when it moves to Africa, which will move very quickly. Some of the arrowheads of the protests were on hand to apologize to the management as they stand behind their leaders to mend fences to enable a better discussion on how to engage them in the university affairs going forward. The Kogi state government has expressed displeasure over the quality of work done on the six-kilometer Odenyi Oguma Sharia Road construction in Basa local government area. The Commissioner for Works, Mohammed Yusuf, made this comment after inspecting the ongoing road and bridge projects in the area. He says the contractors handling the projects are expected to show a high level of dedication to all the projects of the government. The Commissioner for Works in Kogi State and his team are on their way to Basalan to inspect some projects initiated by the immediate past administration of Yahya Belo. First across over the River Niger, a 30-minute journey on water which ends in Shintako community. From there, it's on to Oguma in Basa local government headquarters where some of the projects are located, including a 16-kilometer road and a bridge. On arrival, the site supervisor receives the commissioner and his team and takes them around the projects to see the extent of work done. The commissioner is not satisfied with what he sees and the slow pace of work. And please, uh, the director of C will take note of that. I will yes, not allow anybody to supervise this project except you are qualified and satisfied by, 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 by current or, or Nigeria Institute of Engineer. He also inspects other projects as he engages a site supervisor on the completion date. And how, how soon will you complete the project? At the stage we are now, this one will be by tomorrow when my carpenters are done to be cast. Okay, with the situation of the work, I'm not satisfied. And I have seriously hammered on the representative of the contractor to make sure that uh, this job is, uh, is completed as soon as uh, possible to enable the community enjoy the evidence of democracy that had been laid down by the last administration, which is His Excellency, led by His Excellency Elijah Yahya Adozabelo, with the consideration and the continuity of uh, His Excellency Elijah Ahmad Usman Ododo, who is now the executive governor of Kogi State. The local government caretaker chairman lends his voice on the issues. Uh, my appeal to the government is uh, the government should come to our aid to facilitate the work so that uh, in the next uh, three months this work should be completed so that people to alleviate the suffering of people. In fact, the far people are here, farmers are here in this community. But how to move the farm uh, uh, produce a problem? The projects when completed, more than 20 communities will be directly exposed to economic development and agricultural activity will be enhanced. Coming up, Nasarawa and Benway State Government explore partnership in the areas of security and agriculture. Please stay with us. Thank you for staying with us. You're watching Newsroom series, Newsroom North Central today. Governor Abdurrahman Abdurrahzak of Kwara State commends President Bola Tinubu for approving the reconstruction of 130 kilometer Bode. Sorry, Bode's Adu Kaima Kasabosu Road project in Kwara North Senatorial District of the state. The governor says that the road construction 
will improve economic activity in the district as well as help farmers move their farm produce into the city. The Guar North Senatorial District comprises of five local government areas, which include Baratin, Edu, Patagi, Kayama and Moro. In these local government areas, most of the roads are bad, which makes travel time much longer than usual. For this reason, the president has given approval for the construction of the 130-kilometer road from Bodhisattu, Kayama, Kosubosu, in return, gradually bringing commercial activities back to the area. Stakeholders from the area, led by the Speaker of the Kwara State Assembly, is at the size to appreciate the President and the State Governor for facilitating the project. We are here to look at the road being awarded by federal government, facilitated by Malan Abraman Abdrazak. The benefit is one, the agricultural produce we have in the senatorial district of Kora North, we are able to take our goods easily to the state capital, take our goods to the state capitals of North Central states and Northern Nigeria. For over decades, traveling down to our federal constituency has always been several hours trip and it has been stressful for everybody. And now that this road has started by the government of His Excellency, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, through Governor Abdrahman Abdrazak, CON, Chairman Nigeria Governors Forum, as a road that is opening up quite enough because from recent statistics, our senatorial district is capable of feeding 30% of Nigerians. We have a lot of farm produce and natural resources in our central district. But the lack of road, major roads to link us all together has always been a problem for us. The project supervisor assured of the speedy completion of the project. That detail, um, basically as you can see, we, where you are standing now is uh, around close to 10 kilometers on the airworks already. And we've already done clearing beyond this point already. Meanwhile, Governor Abdul Rahman Abdul Razak had earlier visited the project site where he thanked the president. So we'll see, thank the federal government, uh, thank the stakeholders. The work has started. We didn't announce it before because a previous administration have come to drop equipment and after elections, they pack the equipment. You can see yourself that we are kilometer nine now. Even the road goes forward to about 13 kilometers of earthwork being done, so it shows a lot of seriousness. You've seen the amount of equipment on site. So and we're dealing with a very serious company. Um, the work they're doing is quite magnificent, so uh, we're truly, truly happy with this project. This road will cost in excess of 350 billion, so that's why I say it's huge. From It's a huge, it's a big economic road. From here you can be in Republic of Benin under three hours. So it's going to open up um, Nigeria's economy to Republic of Benin to echo, to echo our sub-region, especially with the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. And it's also going to open up the whole agrarian area, agriculture here. This road project is powered through tax credit by a private company in order to reduce the financial burden on the federal government. Staying in Kwara State, the governor took time to visit ongoing industrial park project in Asa local government area. Some of the facilities inspected at the industrial park include the new film studio, expected to start production in a few weeks. This is the first phase of the project, which covers two square kilometers and will eventually extend to 10 square kilometers. During the inspection, the governor expressed happiness at the extent of work done, where he says the industrial park will create job opportunities and enhance the economic base of Kwara State. This is the industrial park. This is the phase one. Um, we're glad with the progress of work. And already we've had investors. Um, yesterday, a company came in to build an LNG conversion plant to provide cars, um, gas for cars and conversion to CNG. Um, BOA is coming in, they've already indicated um, the interest in production here. So really, um, this is a catalyst for development in this state. The key to this is job creation and IGI drive. So we're very optimistic that very soon um, this place will be fully occupied and uh, as progress for BOA.
this first phase is um, two square kilometers and will extend eventually to over 10 square kilometers and also part of it will be um, an export processing zone and uh, so we're very optimistic like I said if we can have fully indicated interest to commence construction here building the um, factories even before we finish Away from Kwara State, Governor Caleb Muftwang of Plateau State has issued an executive order that will regulate the construction of buildings and flow of vehicular traffic. The order is to address the indiscriminate manner in which buildings are being erected without proper planning and documentation, the chaotic traffic control within the greater JOS master plan, which has hampered free vehicular movement, as well as posing security threats to the people. The growing population in Plateau State, North Central Nigeria, particularly Jos, the state capital, and what is called Jos Bukuru Metropolis, has led to an increase in human and vehicular traffic, resulting in the construction of buildings without proper documentation and non-adherence to safety measures, making the traffic situation more chaotic. In order to correct this anomaly, Governor Caleb Muftwang has issued an executive order to deal with poor construction of buildings and indiscriminate parking of vehicles. This executive order aims to regulate the construction of buildings and the flow of vehicular traffic in Plateau State. Under this order, all new building projects must obtain the necessary permits and comply with building codes and regulations. Unauthorized constructions will be demolished in accordance with the law. Furthermore, the order also aims to streamline vehicular traffic by implementing traffic management measures, such as designated parking spaces, traffic lights, and road signages. Violators of traffic rules will face strict penalties, including fines and vehicle impoundment. We believe that by enforcing this executive order, we can improve the quality of life for all residents of Plateau State and create a safe and organized urban environment we urge all residents to cooperate with the authorities and adhere to the provisions of Executive Order Number 003-2024. Officials of ministries and agencies that will execute the order visit some construction sites where a government property for social facility in the community has been converted to use by an individual without approval. They also expressed dismay over the continued development of the structure in spite of a stop work order. I called the director responsible for enforcement, which is the JMDP, which is the one that has the responsibility to enforce. He seems not to be aware of what is going on. So we came down together and to ensure that uh, we stopped them from working. All of us, a high power delegation of government functionaries. And to our greatest dismay, uh, like he said, there was no single structure here. We said stop work when they were just digging, destroying government uh, facilities. This is a government facility. We've done our due diligence already. We've seen. Uh, it's not what to openly discuss now. But I think the person needs to do the needful now by bringing down the structures because it's still government owned property. And we will not take things for granted. Plateau State Commissioner for Information and Communication, Musa Ashoms, reiterates the state government's resolve to deal with those responsible. We're using this medium to sound a caveat to people who are lawless, people who will not go by the order of this um, state. You cannot just build without an approval, without a plan. People shouldn't be in a hurry to deface our city. We are trying to make our city green. We are trying to make our city beautiful. So people cannot come and just take over government property and think that there is no ownership. This is not a lawless state. This is not a banana republic. This is Plateau State. So this is going to be a, a, a caveat and a warning to everybody that feels he is above the law. The state government says it will continue proper monitoring and implementation to reduce the indiscriminate construction of buildings and avoid issues of building collapse as well as clear the chaotic traffic situation. Family Nasarawa and Benue state governments are looking to synergize to improve security and agricultural production. The governors of Nasarawa and Benue revealed this after a closed door meeting at the government house in Lafia, the state capital. There's the synergy 
uh, you know, you don't fight insecurity as an island. Uh, more so we're neighbors in here. Uh, some part of his state is experiencing the same thing. Mine is experiencing the same thing. So we need to share uh, thoughts on the dynamics to be employing and a number of things like that. I also will use the opportunity to congratulate him as one of the governors, you know, selected by leadership, you know, you. recently, you know, which is, uh, which, which is a vindication of what some of the things we say uh, earlier. So, but he mentioned to you all the things that we discuss. We discuss about security, we discuss about uh, uh, issues of the border between us, we discuss about agriculture, as you know, and, uh, in most cases, you, you will see Benue is number one in one area, Nasara is number two in this, and, and a good example is actually in Yam. We have been following very slowly. We are, we are waiting when Benue will be number one, Nasara also will be number one, so that we can be together. <laughs> That's it on Newsroom Series today. Thank you for watching. I'm a little bit of